Let's uh, kick off with that, that, that wild pullback that we, we saw in October. I mean, what was the cause of it in your eyes, the size of it? Uh, did it surprise you and, and, and is it in the, in the rear view mirror now? Uh, I don't think it's in the rear view mirror. I think we're going to see further falls in the next month or so. Um, I think the causes are multifarious. You've got uh, quantitative tightening, obviously, in the United States and elsewhere. You've got the fact that the internet stocks, the fangs, were really over-owned and still are. And they were the principal cause why the, market, the Nasdaq market had gone up so much in the previous year. Uh, and I think you're going to see more bad news out of them. And therefore, I'd be very cautious, generally, on the U.S. market in particular. Let's talk about some of those fang names. I mean, Facebook in particular, uh, before I left this show, we would d discuss uh, your negative view on there. So do you feel vindicated on that? And uh, do you think, I mean, that of all the fangs has pulled back the most from its highs. Do you think it's got further to go still, Facebook? Um, I do. I think it's a time waster's charter for two billion people. And more <laughs> and more people are, are cutting the cord with Facebook. And although they've got other things like Instagram and WhatsApp and so forth, I think fundamentally its glory days are over. It's quite expensive. It's more than 20 times next year's earnings. And it's now X growth fundamentally. It's also going to have to spend a lot more money. So I would be out of Facebook. And I think it's got a further downside of 30 or 40 percent. Uh, and of those other sort of high-profile tech names, the Fang names, and you can throw uh, Apple in there as, uh, as well, are there any of those that you would buy at this, this level? Well, Apple is essentially X growth, um, but on the other hand, Apple is relatively cheap, so I wouldn't be a seller of Apple. However, Amazon has further to fall. Um, it was way overpriced when it was a trillion dollar stock, and I would think at this level it's got another 20 or 30 percent to fall, largely because it's, going, uh, its growth is slowing and because it's a company that's run almost as a charity for consumers and, and doesn't pay much attention to shareholder returns except in the stock price, but not in the bottom line. What about elsewhere in the U.S.? Are there sectors, pockets of, of valuation? that are attractive? Yeah, I think the oil and gas sector is interesting and the oil rig sector is quite interesting. And of course, there's always opportunities in the United States. It's such a, a big, wide market. And I would say some of the biotech companies, like Gilead, for instance, are very, very cheap. So there are areas in which I would buy. And I'm not deeply negative on the United States. I just think we're treading water and we will do for a while. On biotech, you've had some big successes there in the past. Uh, your, your latest theme is, is longevity. Is, is that right? We're in the middle of longevity week in London. Yeah, this is the first longevity week ever and it's culminating next Monday with a longevity forum and the UK Minister of Health is speaking there and so forth. Yeah, this is a science that's come out of the shadows. We all have the aspiration of living a longer and healthier life and now the science is catching up with that and some great stuff is happening and human trials are undergoing and I think in the next few years you'll see some dramatic results in terms of human life expectancy. And uh, Longevity Week itself is a, is a charitable uh, uh, move but are there ways to play this? Any of the biotech stocks that you like that uh, you, you like because of this uh, particular theme? Yeah there are two main listed ones in the United States both relatively recently listed. One is called Unity um, which um, has a senolytic drug in development removing senescent cells from the body. That's in human trials. I think that's very exciting. And then there's Restore Bio, which is boosting the immune system in elderly patients. And that's also very exciting. I think both of those are uh, buys. But there'll be plenty more coming to market in the next few years. Back to the US, both markets and economy. Uh, clearly, a lot of focus has been on the relationship with China, the, the trade talks there. Uh, do you think that could improve after the midterms? Or are we on a path with China and US in their relationship that is only going to get worse over the next couple of years? Oh, I think things will improve. I mean, you know, the Trump way is basically to, to rattle the, the cage and then to be friends later on. And I think that's what's going to happen with China. And actually, the Chinese market looks worth nibbling at at the moment. Because if you strip out the financials, you've got about a seven times PE there. And China remains the world's growth engine. And I think it will continue to do so for the next decade or so. So you're not concerned when you see the headlines that the Chinese currency is at a 10-year low, that it's very close to, to what people describe as a psychological level of crossing uh, seven. Is that something that you worry about or not? No, I don't worry about that at all. In fact, I think the US dollar fundamentally is overvalued and I would be a buyer if you could do it in the Chinese currency and certainly a buyer in the Japanese yen at the moment, which is significantly undervalued.